sensitized to be male or female by the sex hormones. One fetus will develop ovaries and its brain will be programmed to release hormones in cycles. It is female. Another fetus will develop testicles and its brain will release constant low-level amounts of sex hormones. It is male. We'll explore the man's. During a man's lifetime, his testicles produce billions of sperm. They are stored here in the epididymis. The Cowper's gland produces a lubricating fluid to aid the sperm's journey. The prostate gland secretes an alkaline fluid to protect the sperm. Together, they produce most of the fluid called semen. During ejaculation, the sperm leave the epididymis, moving through the vas deferens, this tube in the body cavity. They approach the seminal vesicles, which release a solution of sugar to nourish them. Cowper's and prostate fluids combine with the sperm, and the blended semen continues out of the man's body through the urethra in the penis. This is the interior of the urethra itself. We are traveling up into the man's body from the outside through the penis. are blood vessels. The black spots are calcium deposits. In reality, the journey is only seven or eight inches long. sexual arousal, a valve here stops urine from entering the urethra. The valve is now open. Here, near the bladder, the urethra passes through the prostate gland. of the prostate have more than 30 orifices like these which squeeze out prostate fluid when sperm pass through the urethra. It is about the size of a golf ball and it resembles a sponge. Inside it is filled with the small cavities which produce the fluid. testicles, highly magnified and without their usual protective pouch. Unlike the ovaries, their counterpart in women, the testicles lie outside the body cavity. They are made up of the tightly coiled seminiferous tubules, which have a total length of 700 feet. 
In the tubules, sperm are produced at the extraordinary rate of 100 million every 24 hours. In the tissue between the tubules, the sex hormone testosterone is produced. The testicles are the essential male organs of reproduction. They function well only under very specific conditions. One of these specific conditions is temperature. Sperm are produced most efficiently at several degrees below normal body temperature. These images from a thermal camera reveal the various temperature zones in the scrotum, the pouch of skin in which the testicles are suspended. The white areas are the warmest, and the green ones the coolest. The scrotum keeps the testicles away from the body's heat. This is a cross-section of one of the tubules in the testicles, stained blue and magnified 2,000 times. At the dense center of the tubule is the transport canal, which carries mature sperm away to the epididymis for storage. The smaller compartments produce many new immature sperm every 36 hours. As the sperm become more mature, they move closer to the central canal. The average man produces over 400 billion sperm in his reproductive lifetime. These sperm, magnified 4,000 times, have been in production for approximately a month. They are tightly packed in the tubule within the testicle, their heads and tails intertwined. Inside the developing sperm heads, the normal body cell's 46 chromosomes have been reduced to 23. But this reduction of chromosomes, so essential to future reproduction of the species, puts the sperm in mortal danger. The man's body considers these cells enemies. But the sperm are defended by nurse cells, like this one and the large cell at the right. They form special protective barriers around the maturing sperm cells. Each nurse cell cares for many sperm at a time. This tendril is part of the remarkable communication network which connects each nurse cell to over 150 separate sperm cells throughout the tubule. The tendrils enable the nurse cells to feed and protect the maturing sperm and to move them closer to the transport canal. This sperm is nearly mature. During its development, it has lain in total passivity in the tubule, being protected and nourished by the nurse cell. Mature, like this one, it is transported by the nurse cell to the epididymis. Millions of sperm are stored in these densely packed tubules, which, if stretched out, would be 15 or 20 feet long. The mature sperm in the epididymis will pass out of the man's body through ejaculation two to three hundred million at a time. Or they will eventually die and be reabsorbed. These sperm carry the man's genetic material and they are fully mature. But they are not yet able to fertilize a woman's egg. They do not attain that ability until they are actually far up inside the woman's body.